everyone, and welcome back to NCT. In today's video, we're going to be filling this space with a fully custom 3D printed overpass. Right here is where I plan to build the Cumberland Avenue overpass on my layout. The Saranac River, well, in its early stages, is going to be somewhere around here, between here and that switch, which is the uh, the Plattsburg north end of the double track. The bridge is going to fall right along here, somewhere between Margaret Street and the river. So this is the space I have to work with. Now let's go check out the prototype on Google Maps. So I have my Google Maps pulled up here, and I'm just going to zoom in to right where I'm trying to model Cumberland Avenue right here. And I grab my street view, um, little man dangling, and I'm just going to drag it and I see I can go down to this it's not even really a street but he went down here so I'm gonna take advantage of that so here we see we can see underneath the overpass and obviously when I go to make the surface I'll go up on top of the overpass but for now we're trying to make the support so this one is gonna probably be the hardest and the biggest one to make so I'm just gonna look here I have I, I see this side from here and then to see the other side I just zoom in and look on the other side I'm kind of just assuming they're the same and at this point I don't really care on my railroad you know it, it's my railroad so I'm going to design this piece and print it and we'll see what we get alright so I have that piece done now we're gonna take a look at the next pieces this one looks pretty similar to the first one it just does not have that base so in a minute here, I'll go into the CAD file and show you how I remove that and print that. And then it looks like we just have some some concrete, you know, supports right here at the very end. And I am not sure if I'm going to print that or if I'm just going to make it out of styrene. Yeah, I guess I'll try to print that because this is, after all, a 3D printed bridge project. Right here, I have some stone bricks, which I can use from a brick styrene sheet. And I think those main supports is going to be what we print, and the rest of it I think we should be able to make from basic styrene. So I've opened my design in Onshape, and as you can see, I've obviously already designed, um, yeah, pretty much the whole thing. So, you know, you can see the front view. I pretty much estimated on all of these measurements and angles because, again, I am trying to model something that looks like the Cumberland Avenue overpass, not a perfect 1 to 87 replication but I think it looks good enough to give it a test print so without going into detail of how I designed this I'm gonna send this over to the printer and we'll see how it looks and then the next piece which is going to be the this uh, this middle piece here I'll walk you through how I created that so I went ahead and opened up my Prusa Slicer software on my Windows computer. I'm going to import the file here. I called it Bridge Test because I don't know if it'll work for sure. Looks like they want us to resize it in inches. And that is incredibly small, so we're going to have to really zoom in to even see that. And just to make it big enough to really manage, I'm just going to increase it by 15% or 1500 um, from 100. So there you can see that actually looks pretty good. But I, what I know as a fact is that the top measurement where the road is going to sit, um, that should be 3 and 3 quarter inch. So I'm just going to type in 3.75 there on my top measurement. And that should be the size that it should be. Now, to print it so that things don't get messy, what I did is I designed it to lay flat on one side. So as you can see, that will print much better. Uh, a lot less defying gravity, you could say. So now I'm just going to slide it down slightly because I find it prints better if it's closer to the bottom. And my detail setting is set on 0 0.10 layer height. You can actually go even smaller with this Prusa i3 MK3, um, but 10 is a good for testing. So I'm just going to go ahead and slice this. You can see it'll take less than three hours, so not, not a terrible print. Um, so we'll export this to my SD card and see what we get. All right, so I'm back here in the basement. Pieces are printed. They actually came out pretty well, except the, the way the printer makes layers. Um, the, these these came out a little, uh, you know, they don't look like smooth concrete, so I'm gonna have to sand those down a little bit. 
Um, but they came out pretty well, actually. They, they actually do look a lot like concrete. Um, obviously, with some, some weathering and, and dull coat, they'll look a lot better. So if I place these here, and if I grab a box car, Yeah, that, that clearance is pretty tight, and I do want to be able to run double stack intermodal and higher auto racks on this line because I do want this to be able to serve all eras, and obviously the real bridge in Plattsburgh can do double stacks because they have run them before. So I think what I'm going to do is find a piece of foam to raise this stuff up on and just kind of try give the bridge a little more height and kind of give the river a little more depth. So here I have two pieces of foam. Um, this is just, I believe this is like one inch foam. As you can see, it's like layered here. Um, this is just the stuff I had lying around from a different layout. Um, and I cut two approximate pieces. I sloped it down for the tracks, obviously. What I think I'm gonna do is actually make this slope more gradual so that these aren't sitting quite so high. I kind of want them about that high. And then I'm gonna have to kind of slope the rest of it down like this and obviously I'm gonna to need to use some some plaster or something else to shape things so I've marked these with a marker uh, and now I'm gonna glue them down actually before I cut because something that's attached to something that isn't going to move makes it a whole lot easier to cut um, tacky glue I love to hate it um, as you can see it, it's not coming out um, so we'll be here for a while oh it's coming so I'm gonna use this to glue down. You can use, you know, Elmer's glue, um, anything. I might use Elmer's glue just because this is so hard to squeeze. Welcome to North Country Trains, the channel where I show you how not to do things. That only took a while, but we got it down now. So I'm gonna make sure I line this up. I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be too precise, but you definitely wanna make sure your two sides line up to each other. Now that I have that down, I'm gonna get something to weigh this down. Not too much that I stress out the main foam, but just enough so that it doesn't lift up at all, because we want really good adhesion on here. So now we're going to take a look at designing the middle piece. So if you look here on the bridge, it looks pretty similar. And I know my proportions are slightly off, but I still think it's close enough. So as you can see, the bottom cross support isn't there. So if I just delete those three pieces that make up the bottom support. So if I right click on each one, click delete, that should give me something pretty similar. I do feel that, looking back at this, I designed the main vertical supports a little bit narrower than they are in real life, but I'm still happy enough with the design that I'm not going to go back and change it. It'll still be recognizable for what it is. So as you can see, these supports are a lot shorter than these ones over here, and by a lot I mean they're somewhat shorter, but for my layout, I'm actually going to make them shorter just so that everything becomes more even and I can really give the bridge a better slope because it is kind of rounded on the top and I'm not used to these controls for panning things around I formerly used Fusion 360 um, and this is very similar to Fusion if you already use that but some of the viewing controls are a lot different so now I'm gonna extrude these two bottom pieces here uh, just kind of um, push them up to make this slightly less tall help give the bridge a gradient and I think that looks pretty good so we're going to send this over to the printer and see what we get. All right, we're back here in the basement piece is complete and I printed this one like I said at a smaller layer height so it it may look a little bit better overall otherwise I'm not seeing a whole lot of improvement but anyway here it is you can see it's not as tall as the other one anyone remember this soldering iron I bought it in Waterville Maine if you watch my Waterville Maine trip video part 
2, I believe. Um, I bought this to fix my scanner at Home Depot, or at Walmart, actually. Um, and it's obviously not as good as my good soldering iron, so I decided to repurpose it. I took the tip, I moved it as far out of the heating element as possible. And so now it makes a decent foam cutter until I can get an actual hot wire foam cutter. Um, I do recommend doing this, but proceed at your own risk because this green foam, I haven't cut the pink foam yet, but the green foam definitely doesn't smell the best and it gives off some fumes and then your tip is not gonna be reusable after you do this. So only use a Walmart quality soldering iron to do this. All right, so I got my soldering iron heated up. You definitely wanna make sure you have enough electrical cord space for this. I'm just gonna take this and this is the most satisfying thing you'll ever do as long as you don't breathe in the fumes. Cuts like butter. For bigger pieces, you definitely wanna use a hot wire cutter, but for smaller pieces, this is definitely economical and it reuses, you know, soldering irons maybe you bought on a trip like I did. So I'm gonna do a time lapse on how I did this and we'll see how it comes out. before we design the two end pieces I decided to add foam so I have a rough block of foam here it's two inch foam that will kind of create the embankment obviously I need some more pieces to get this down to river level and I have another two inch piece here and a one inch piece here and this black sharpie line um, is going to be where the river is going to go and I'm not going to go too far into the landscaping of this because again I'm waiting to do the river until I have proper cutting tools the soldering iron it works great, um, but I really need a hot wire cutter for this. Um, we'll see. But I also need to get the actual bridge for the railroad bridge over the river. So we're just going to roughly get these in place um, just so that we can finish the bridge project because that's the focus of this video. All right, so I got my two end pieces printed. Now we're gonna work on installing them. In addition to the stone brick retaining walls on either side, I have a piece of scrap brick sheet here and then I got some more foam. So watch the time lapse and check out how I did it.
Okay, so that was a bad idea. Uh, the foam kind of totally reacted with the paint. Um, it's painted now though. Hopefully the foam doesn't completely uh, melt away. So as you can see, the bridge is uh, at least in its mock-up state. The supports are glued in completely. Uh, I just got to do plaster and obviously finish the river. I also have the bridge kit right down here. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I designed, printed, and built up the landscape. In part two, I'll be finishing the surface of the bridge and the surrounding, uh, you know, blending it into the scene. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. And uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see more 3D printing in model railroading.